Okay guys, now I'm at uh, Putrajaya Talk about There's an event about the 5G Malaysia So, come on We're going to walk around and uh, see What is happening uh, 5G evolving in Malaysia What are they going to do? Yeah, so this is the TM booth we are seeing here right now. Cell car. DG, Let's look at DG. So now 5G, most of the 5G technology is really focusing on uh, saving lives because the network is much quicker than current our current 4G network. Mostly 5G is also good for gaming as well because of the constant fast and stable networking. Uh, let's uncover what is going on over here as well first. Okay, we'll just uh, have a look here first. Okay, here is uh, again uh, from Huawei. So Huawei's booth is here. As you can see now, they are showing like what Huawei technologies are doing for smart agriculture, manufacturing, aquaculture. They, they even have all the 5G phones here as well. Matebook X Pro here as you can see it's ready for 5G this is the Kirin 980 processor powering the Mate 20 Pro and P30 P30 Pro as well now this is the Mate 20 X 5G I don't think in Malaysia we are selling this version at the moment so this is the modern chip that supports the 5G. Yeah, yeah modems. And here is the Huawei Mate X, the foldable phone, uh, which also equipped with the uh, 5G modem as well. Yeah, the healthcare over here, what Huawei is able to help deliver in Malaysia with their 5G technology, drones, aquaculture. Okay, we'll come back later to the Huawei event. That will be later. Uh, we'll just move around here first. We're going into the event first. Yeah, so here is Maxis showing their 5G technology as well. Let us just see what some more 
5G is capable to help our modern lives. Look at that, can even like measure water metering. Alright, let's see other things. Smart canvas internet things. Hey, robotic arm. Let's see what Ericsson has brought over. So, Ericsson has showcased here a 5G virtual classroom here. Welcome Look at the hologram. Okay, I was just going to move real quick a bit. Yeah, here is Nokia Ozo 360 degrees. Again, all thanks to the 5G technology, which really helped improve the networking stability. Five G networking instantaneously. Cool, cool, cool. All right, new mobile over here. See, they are collaborating with ZTE, like for monitoring through CCTVs. All right, come. We we'll go to the front part of uh, U Mobile. Over here. Okay. Organization and 
together, get everyone connected for the better connection, uh, better connected work. Right? So here, uh, of course, uh, the first showcase that we want to show to you is uh, at least a facial recognition. Right? Okay, come over. Facial recognition, uh, maybe it's not something new, but why is 5G? First of all, we have to tell uh, 5G features uh, three characteristics which is very critical, essential for the connection. Right. First of all, it's a low level latency. Right. With ultra low latency is required in order to uh, for, for, for us to have uh, this uh, fast response, precise and accurate response by the machine or by the uh, uh, connection connecting to the uh, uh, communication server or the cloud. Right. So and at the same time, the connection must be stable so that you have minimum uh, uh, defect. Right. So the second uh, uh, features in the 5G is uh, EMTC, enhanced machine type communication. Right. Basically, in nutshell, is IoT. Right. So 5G connection is uh, uh, designed to cater a massive deployment on the uh, IoT. Uh, 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 to enable different applications, right? So, in a, uh, for example, in one base station, uh, uh, 5G base station, you can basically connecting about 1 million devices per kilometer square, right? Compared to the 4G and 3G they can use, right? So, the third uh, features on the 5G is uh, EMBB, right? Enhanced mobile broadband, right? It's discussing about the capacity bandwidth that you are able to transmit over the air, right? So, uh, for example, uh, when you are talking about facial recognition, one of the functions is a camera and a pictures, right? The video file, the picture file that you need to transmit, right? Basically, you need to have a high bandwidth, for example, a 4K resolution file, right? You will require about 40 to 80 max connection, right? Come to the 8K, then you need almost 120 max, right? So here you need to have uh, this uh, uh, ultra low latency because once I come over, it should be detecting me, right? Then I can pass. The whole process has to be seamless, right? And you are able to respond to my body. So this is the second use case. In the smart manufacturing, uh, we, are, um, we, we are discussing about the Malaysia vision uh, on the Industry 4.0, right? We are discussing about how to transform a traditional factory production into a smart factory production, right? So, uh, I give an example, right? In the normal factory production line, you have a lot of tasks, which is routine tasks, right? So, what the how smart manufacturing can do for you, basically, uh, they were able to uh, modulize the individual task, right? And then after modulize, uh, modulize it, you can automate the task, right? What this translate to? They translate into a few different angles, uh, perspective. On the factory side, you were able to improve the uh, factory production, right? And then at the same time, with the routine uh, process repeating, right? You're able to uh, reduce the defect errors, right? Uh, uh, on the human mistake. Right. Then, in the perspective for the worker, right. So now the worker do not need to handle just a routine environment, right. They will able to upgrade their skill to hand uh, to handle uh, 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 more intelligence uh, access uh, tasks, right. Then come to the factory smart factory. When we ask about smart factory, what is related to the five G, right. So uh, still the same thing. When we talk about the factories uh, processing, right, we need the machine need to have uh, this uh, low latency in order to help them to produce uh, 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 the, the, this uh, automated task in a precise manner, in an accurate manner. And the most important thing is reduce the defect on the production, right. Then the second thing is uh, we are talking about in a factory when you make it automated means that there's a lot of sensors that mounting in across different machines. Right. You need to have real-time monitoring, you need to uh, uh, manage all the sensors required in order to tell you to keep it back right. when it's the right time to do maintenance. Right. Because in production line, any failures on the production line will cost a lot of money. Not very late, right. So this will help them to prevent, do the proper prevention maintenance, preventive maintenance. 
and at the same time you are able to focus right what is the production uh, uh, risk that you will require right so and then uh, come to the other side is factories uh, compound is very huge right and if you do not need to have so many people around means that you need to have more intelligent way of how to monitor the environment right the monitor the environment not only is a security on the uh, uh, these uh, parameters but it's also monitor how is the condition of the machine right and then within the machinery areas you will have uh, this uh, AGV right to transport all the goods and around right you need to ensure that uh, every equipment every part every machine right is uh, able to uh, operate in a self ma self managed manner and at the same time in a secure manner right so this when you have uh, this uh, video requirement what you what translate to you need to have a big capacity of the primary transmission right this can be done by 5g right basically uh, in a 5g right you're able to provide for example a camera with a focus size right you need you need to have about 40 meg to 80 meg maybe you have uh, cds before right but I would like to highlight a few things over here, right? So uh, I was suppose this is the only first 5G call that you can make for the 5G phone, right? Why I say so, right? If you're referring to the corner of this, right? Every phone they have a signal to show the signal bar will show you whether you are on a 4G, you are on 3G, right? Here is showing you on 5G. You can have a close shot on this. So secondly, uh, uh, our colleagues here will be able to show you uh, the experience on this after the flip and before the flip. The first thing and the second thing is you are able to show to you a video call, right, without lagging. Right? And thirdly, it will show to you with a high resolution 4K video, 4K movie, right, how it has been by it. This is a 4K video. This is a 4K video. Right? You can see it? Okay. YouTube. Use Pavg. He's new on this one because he just received it. He also trying to see how to operate. Just he's making the call now. Yeah. Now he's connecting to another telephone. Okay. So the camera is at the rear, so how does it transmit back? Let's say they are, they are doing 5G call right now, right? It has to close it and then... Yeah. When you close it, you flip it whichever way, right? The screen will follow you. This is another unique part. Yeah, this is, yeah. Because you can see the camera is right here. Excuse me, can you try again? The folder? Oh. Yeah. Before and after, yeah. Here is before, right? Now he can fold. Right when he fold, you can see there's no stretches in between, right? There's no gap. It's one speed. And then the string is follow you, however you flip, no matter how you flip.
4K 啊 ，This brand。4K registration street。自拍吗？前置镜头在哪？它它是都是在这样。如果要自拍的话，我就要这样。对，这样。嗯、应应应该让那个刚才那个中段那个小伙子。现在就可以拍你们自己了。For all these demos, like how close must it be to get optimal? For example, the face section here, right? It's not only cover here, here, mm. right? It's also the drone outside, mm. right? It's quite a huge area here, right? But we also limit the propagation height to be within the vicinity, about 500 meters. So now the speed is roughly around. Uh, that day. I can't remember what is the test speed. Let me check. Uh, what is the test speed that we achieved that day? Test speed? Uh, what is the speed that currently is able to do? Oh, uh, if you think of uh, what is the battery that we have, for example, just now you saw on the other screen, right? With a smartphone, Okay, with uh, 200 megahertz uh, spectrum, okay, we are able to achieve 3.2 GPS. So it depends on how much battery you need. So if you want to put okay, with uh, 200 megahertz uh, spectrum, okay, we can achieve like 3.2 GPS C band. Using smartphone, if you are using those test 
T-U-E, right? T-U-E, we call it, you can even achieve it. For example, uh, I think some of the operators, they are using our equipment, um, but they are using millimeter wave, that they achieve more than 5 GPS. So it really depends on like what type of spectrum, how much spectrum. Two of the operators they achieve more than five GPS using T. So both of them like they're using the same standards, huh? Uh, same standards. Uh, so like in 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 a Putrajaya area, like how many stations of these would they have to put up to get a full coverage? Uh, to get a full coverage, mm -hmm. you have to see. Okay, to get a full coverage mm -hmm. with existing their 4G sites footprint, mm -hmm. right? They just have to reuse their existing. 4G site footprint. Mm -hmm. Okay, basically you can achieve mm -hmm. uh, very good coverage. Yeah, because in 5G we have two standards. One we call NSA, another one we call SA. NSA means stand not stand alone. It will have to work together with 4G. Okay, so with NSA technology, you basically uh, can achieve same coverage as your uh, by just reusing your existing LTE footprint. for indoors also, right? Okay, yes, uh, you are right. Uh, for indoor, we probably uh, have to deploy uh, some indoor solutions. We have a lamp site over there. Have yes. you guys heard about our Huawei lamp site? It's digital indoor system. Okay, the traditional passive system. Uh, we find it very challenging in order to provide coverage for the indoor because uh, most of the components Today may not support the higher frequency unless you change to the new one. What I mean is that for SSD operators, right, their system, the components may not be able to support higher rate of energy. Yeah, the legacy one. So, and we propose moving forward to use our digital indoor system, like for example, Huawei website. Yeah, and we, Huawei is not the only one to provide this kind of like solution in the industry.
Uh, condos maybe later lah. Ah, uh, later. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Focus in those hotspot area first, like transport hub, like airport. AK unit about 120 k, uh, 120 meg of uh, capacity. Right. So here, uh, later we will show to you, right, one of the innovative way of manufacturing before uh, a junk manufacturer, right. So what happened is uh, here is a simple task, right. You put the signatures on the pad, right. It will, uh, the signature on the pad is an image that you're going to capture and transmit by the 5G to the cloud server. Then the cloud server will then send the instruction to the robotic arm, right? And then the feeding, the feeding arm will have a coordination, right, with the uh, engraved one. So with the proper precise coordination and the accurate positioning, right, uh, position, they were able to do the engrave in the accurate manner, right, without the right? So who want to start first? Right, anyone? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sign, sign yeah, yeah, sign just, just sign your name. Just sign your name. Don't worry. Maybe just sign your name with the date. <laughs> uh, put down the dates. Okay. You just need to do a save. Then you do a print. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Right, then you want to come here later, you have an engrave to show the laser printing. process will take about 1.5 uh, minutes to 2 minutes. Right. But the most important here is the, is the coordination between the arm require a very accurate uh, 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 signal passing. Right. Is it in the cloud or is it live the cloud? It's just like what I mentioned. Right. When you sign here, right, this will become an image that transfer to the cloud right, by 5G. Then the 5G will send the instruction uh, via the server, via the 5G network to send out the instruction to here for all the M2M connectivity, right? M2M. Uh, machine to machine. Yeah, this basically is considered a machine to machine. Yeah. So uh, maybe uh, later on, right after we finish the session, you all can come over here. Right, we can do a signature uh, for you to take back as an uh, experience. Uh, yeah, as an experience uh, 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 that, that you want to take back. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's a big point, big point. Yeah. <laughs> so this one I passed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
So when we talk about healthcare, right, it's very much on the what is the benefits to the citizens, right? So at the same time, uh, we are looking into uh, what the government is able to do to help the citizen to have a better quality of life, right? So over here, uh, we put a demo, right? We are having a doctors simulating the doctors here and the patient on the other side, right? And then. The doctor is connecting to the patient via a 5G connection. Right. Right. So, uh, uh, what happened here on the doctor's side is he will be uh, doing the remote ultrasound scanning on the patient on the other side. And then at the same time, you are able to see here there is a camera with it. So, the doctor will be able to interact with the patient in real time. Right. So what happens is uh, uh, you, you, you will ask, maybe today 4G can do, but when you try to do over 4G, maybe you will need to have buffering before you talk, after you talk, then you will have a delay before you reach that. But with the 5G, this is what we say, low latency, right? You will able to react and see the, the, the movement between the doctor and the patient immediately. You will able to coordinate in real time. Right. So if you can see here, right, while I'm talking here, actually my voice is over there as well. Right. So in the real life, right, we can say a uh, 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 5G features we are able to enable things like smart ambulance. Right. We are, uh, uh, for example, in the smart ambulance, we are talking about remote diagnostic. Right. Uh, with, uh, this uh, this uh, remote monitoring and remote consultation right between the paramedic with the doctors uh, with the uh, specialist in the hospital right then the other hello <laughs> right so uh, where I okay right yeah. so uh, uh, when we're talking about uh, these uh, paramedics right uh, we call for the ambulance Usually are the cases like heart attack, stroke, and things like that, right? So every second of movement uh, or monitoring on the patient is so critical, right? In order to save lives, right? So that's why uh, it's very important for us to have low latency, for us to have high cap uh, bandwidth capacity, so that we are able to transmit the video file, right, in, the, in, in the real time, right, without delay. Same goes to the operations. Like uh, operation. Same goes to the operation. For example, we had a successful use case in the, uh, China. Right? Uh, there is a uh, um, Parkinson's patient, right? Uh, uh, being conducted uh, this uh, this uh, brain surgery, right? This uh, this is a collaboration uh, partnership between uh, this uh, surgeon uh, brain surgeon doctors, right? Uh, and the China Telecom and Huawei, where China Telecom and Huawei can provide a five G connecting piece, right? Uh, between the sur uh, surgeon and also the patient in three kilometers, uh, three thousand kilometers apart. Right. So from Beijing to Thailand, the the Thailand, Thailand. So in China, how many hospitals are doing like this, having this kind of practice using 5G? Uh, this this one I do not have a service, but uh, they start to uh, exploring uh, any kind of possible. Uh, Healthcare use cases is one in one of them. Right. So uh, you want to come over here? This is where you see uh, when the doctor is moving around to move the ultrasound. Right. The patient is supposed to be able to see the doctor's face, communicate with the doctors. Whether the pressure is too strong, right, or not. Not sufficient, right? Whether uh, they have a uh, portion uh, which is painful uh, and, and, and there's a there's an area that there's no impact, right? So all this required to have real time communication. Okay. So here is a drone service, right? When we talk about drone, uh, basically it's a flying machine, right? Mounting with different uh, sensors. 
in camera. Right? So here is a case where we have a tourist fly outside right, to give you a scan on the this event location. Right? Then we deliver this via the Yeah. So who wants to have a try? What kind of uh, uh, service that we provide here? Right? When we talk about uh,
advertising all the free stuff overall they were able to have a savings about 206 240 million USD uh, uh, stock of the million stock of the million stock stock also on top of it we solved the big power issue we solved the pollution issue right? it's a technical and technical benefit right and towards the end what is the launching of this technical thing to launch? Here we see an example of science feeds coming from one of the province in China. What we do actually is the whole idea here we try to say is Malaysia is an agriculture is one of the main contributing around 10% less than 10% of the GDP. And we feel that there's a lot of more we can do in this part of it. And uh, what we're trying to do is actually the main reason is actually to reduce the cost. And we see that uh, majority of our people are working in plantation. So we want to improve the productivity and at the same time to make sure that their revenue or income also flows. So that is one of the main reasons why we want to produce this. And uh, what we have uh, here we have is actually how we can use our technology coming in the future to increase the productivity and reduce the operational costs. So uh, at this if we in so this area we can say we, we have a one acre of land we can bring into the zone. And in that particular zone, what we can do is uh, example in Malaysia maybe we can use because we have a very good something which is very high quality. But how we want to make sure that the something everyone is used is having a very good texture, sweetness, and also the food is very delicious, right? I mean, so that's before we export. To ensure all of them are going in the same path. So this is where we do example in this case. There is a sensor which we put it into the branch so that so that we can we can measure daily hourly the growth of the plant. At the same time, if there is a fruit, we can also measure the size of the fruit. When is the best time to actually you know, be right I mean, for the real is uh, for the all by stuff we try, but again, in this case, is, uh, if we have other things like mango or something, we can actually watch what is actually the growth of the fruit. Similarly, the external sensor, example, this is the light sensor. When the plant is growing, we need to know what is exactly getting a sufficient light. If not, what we do? In this case, we have connected this all automatic, where the light shape will open more light will come in. All of the mic. Data I'll show you in the next one there. And then similarly here also is this uh, UDT uh, which tells you what is the UDT level and the water, I mean the water level so that you can do uh, what you call the watering accordingly. Sometimes you save money by just you know saving the water. <coughs> so and all this information, all these are related to two wireless connecting to our meters and to our gateway which will be sent to our main control center. This is the control center is actually used for analytics. So what we can see okay, an example of this is like we can do a strawberry farm in Genting or at Cameron Islands, right? So can you imagine everything is optimized to our unmanned? We don't even need to go there. And uh, <laughs> the data which is collected here is in this case the surface, the temperature of the ground, air temperature, humidity, time, and all this information, data is connected. We can do it for day, week, month, and season. So we really uh, monitor closely, progressively. And if there is something is wrong, then we will have an alarm. For example, in this case, we see an alarm. What is that alarm saying is the surface temperature is high, 
to show that raising more than 20% of the city in Alam will automatically trigger a wall so that more water will spread into the soil. <laughs>
So uh, on the phone devices itself, you are able to achieve about 4.6 gigabit per second. Right. So some of the highlights on the phone that I would like to mention here is one of it is the external screen folding. Right. This will give you an experience uh, in one glance. This will give you the experience in one glance without any stretch. Right. And the second thing is when the uh, the the in top of camera the front camera and the back camera are integrated camera so whether you are doing selfie or you are doing a photo cropping you are able to see you are able to get the same uh, resolution and same quality right and the most important thing uh, with the chipset the, the pylon chipset that we have right and also the three right you are able to support the uh, possessive intensive applications like gaming, like lifestyle shopping and experience, right? It gives you a different exceptional uh, experience uh, uh, to the users, right? So, uh, any questions? Right. These are the, about the highlights uh, on, the, on the phone and devices. Right? Open this. Alright. Okay. Thank you. 